Hello, welcome to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about VPC. We are going to discuss about VPC, why it was introduced and we are going to see some of the components in VPC. Now before we dwell any further, let us first try to understand how Amazon operated before VPC was introduced. Now let us assume you are trying to deploy your infrastructure in a cloud provider like Amazon. Now you need to understand any cloud providers like Amazon, Azure or Google or public cloud providers which means they welcome anybody to come and set up their infrastructure and bring their applications up. Although there are a lot of advantage of it but one of the major disadvantage is a security threat. Let's say you bring up your infrastructure and you set up some EC2 instance running in your Amazon cloud. Similarly, your competitor also is trying to set up his infrastructure in the same Amazon cloud. Now this is a kind of a shared uh, network space. So there is always a risk of your EC2 instance being accessed by your competitor which you don't intend that to happen. So you don't want your competitor to access your Amazon EC2 instance where you have deployed your database or any confidential application which is highly restricted. So in order to avoid this, Amazon has brought a concept called VPC. Now VPC is an isolated network within the larger network. So let's assume you just create a chunk of the space within the larger network and you say, okay, this is highly protected and I won't allow anybody to access my resources without my permission. Now this is called VPC. Now let's assume you have set up your infrastructure within your VPC and your competitor also has set up their infrastructure in their corresponding VPC. Now do you think these two applications which is deployed in a separate VPC will be able to talk to each other? The answer is no. So this EC2 instance, the application which is deployed in this EC2 instance will not be able to communicate to any resource which is deployed in another VPC. Similarly, your application which is running in EC2 instance will not be able to communicate to any resource which is deployed in another VPC. So this communication is totally not possible and your resource is completely secure within your VPC. Now the question is, what if you want to access a resource which is deployed in a different VPC? So that is possible using VPC peering. We will discuss about VPC peering in a different video. But right now you can just understand that inter-VPC communication is possible. Now let us see some theoretical aspects. Now VPC is a logically isolated network from other virtual networks in AWS cloud where you launch your resource. Now going back to our previous screen, this is a logically separated network within the AWS network. So why do we do this? To get complete control over your virtual network and the resources within your virtual network. This will also help you to enhance your security. So when I say complete control, you get control over your IP address, your components, your hardware devices like routers, NAT gateways, EC2 instance, subnets, everything. So your, all your resources within your VPC is highly controlled by you. Now let me try to explain you through this diagram. Let's assume you try to set up your infrastructure in AWS cloud. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to decide on which region you have to set up your infrastructure. Now let's assume I want to set up my infrastructure in North Virginia region and inside this region I create a VPC. Now in AWS you cannot create a VPC which spans across the region. That might be possible in other cloud providers like Google, but in AWS, it is not possible to span your VPC across the region. It is strictly within the region. Now inside your region, you have multiple availability zones. Now let's say if in a region like North Virginia, you have multiple availability zones and these availability zones is being created so that you can control your network. Now your VPC is a larger network and it is very difficult to control all the IP addresses and instances which is running in your VPC. So for that what you do is you divide your VPC into smaller chunks or in other words VPC is your main network and you divide that network into many small subnetworks. We call the subnetworks as subnets.
So we classify subnet into two groups. One is the public subnet, another one is the private subnet. Now the next question is, I need to run the subnets in different availability zones. Now you can either choose to run all your subnets in a single availability zones or you can run them in a separate availability zones to make your application much more scalable and available. Now that my infrastructure setup is done, now it's time to deploy my application. Now where do you think I will deploy my application? I have two subnets, public and private. Say for example, I have my web application. Now my web application is mostly accessed via the internet. So I would deploy my web application in a public subnet. And I have a database instance which is running and that database instance is very secure and I don't want anybody over the network or any external application to access my database directly through internet. So I will deploy my database in a private subnet. Now I have a router through which it will route the request to my public and private subnet. Now the application which is deployed in a public subnet has a two-way communication to the internet. It can talk to any external application over the internet and all the external application can connect to my web application via the internet. So and since there's a two-way communication, this is possible through internet gateway. Whereas the database which is deployed in a private subnet that is accessed via one-way communication. Like my database can talk to the internet, but any external application cannot access my database via internet. So my private subnet can access via internet, internet gateway via NAT gateway. Now how do I have to access my database if it is deployed in a private subnet and it is strictly prohibited? One way is I need to log into my EC2 instance which is deployed in my public subnet and once I log in, I will be able to access my database which is deployed in a pub private subnet. Or the other way is I set up a VPN connection and through VPN connection, I directly talk to my private subnet. We will talk about what is VPN connection in our next forthcoming videos. For now, it is good to have a basic understanding. Now, each EC2 instance which is running in my public subnet will have an elastic IP address or a pu public IP address which will enable them to be accessed via the internet. Whereas the applications which is deployed in my private subnet will have a private IP address. Through this private IP address, I will be able to communicate within my VPC. But it is not possible to access my private IP address via internet. Now guys, I hope you have a basic understanding about the different components in the VPC and what are these used. We will be talking about these components in greater depth in our separate videos in future. I hope you like this video. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and comment and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you.